Hello, hello. I cannot tell you how many times people ask why were Phoenix contexts introduced? What are, what's their purpose? So I think a little bit of a history lesson might be helpful to understand them. So why were contexts introduced? Well, Phoenix apps prior to, I think it was version 1.3, were very MVC in the sort of Rails way. Like you had models, you had views, controllers, and that meant your directory structure was re reflected that. It would reflect that. But then it came, uh, I think again, it was Phoenix 1.3, and it says Phoenix is not your app. That was kind of the idea. So they separated the web, and that's why you have sort of my app web, right? Where you have your controllers, views, live views now, all that kind of thing. And then you have your regular, like the rest of your app that lives under live whatever, right? Your regular namespace. And you typically have your schemas in there. But the question remained, well, what about this, right? Suppose this is like a controller. You have a product that calls a chain set and inserts, and then maybe you assign that and redirect and all that good stuff. The question was, well, like, what do we do with that code, right? Because that would kind of creep into the web layer if you're calling this from a controller or from a live view. And so the idea was, well, we should introduce a layer that would be the communication, sort of the interface. And that's what Phoenix contexts are. I think sometimes it can be very cruddy, right? Like create, read, update, delete crud, because that's sort of how you get generated if you're sort of just updating users, right, or something like that, but they don't have to be that way. And so the idea was to move something like this into something more like this. Now you have the checkout context, and where you can create a product. I hope you like it.